desire our prayers tonight. If you all will stand with me tonight, we're going to take all the needs upon the board and the ones that I've spoken. And many of us here tonight, I know I have a situation. I know you may have a situation. But here's the time. Let's go ahead and surrender it at the beginning of the service to the Savior. God, we want to come before you tonight. Lord, first and foremost, I give you the thanks for allowing us to come into your house one more time. God, we have brought each and every need here tonight for a reason, God. Lord, not only just speaking them, Lord, but we're expecting great things to come from them, Lord. God, you see all the sickness that may be going around. Lord, you see all the disasters that people may be facing. God, I just ask that you would intervene as only you can, God. Lord, you see this service tonight. You see exactly what we need in your sanctuary tonight, Jesus. Lord, I ask that you would come and dwell in this presence with us tonight. And Lord, we give you all the thanks and all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. If Brother Gene would be making his way. Let's go ahead. Let's give the Lord a hand clap tonight. You know, I'm thankful that we get the opportunity that we have here. Let's worship with Brother Gene. Praise the Lord, everyone. How do y'all like our new little drummer over here? Isn't he doing a great job? Yeah. Let's sing a real old song, I Have Found a Way. Aren't you glad you found a way?
Oh, I'm thankful for that way. Brother Keith is going to lead us in a special song tonight. Let's get behind him and worship with him. Did y'all have a good time on homecoming? Yes. Y'all ate like a bunch of pigs. I don't know if you knew that or not. <clears throat> we had a bunch of meat, and uh, it was all eat up. I was thinking Sunday night when I got home. I said, now there's a bunch of chow hounds out there. But uh, we sure had a good time, didn't we? Just, just us, we had a good time, I thought, and I just really enjoyed the day. Okay, here's another old song, of course. Gene sings old songs, so I, and I sing old songs, but that's all we know, I guess. So here we go. If I had all the wealth of this world. Sunday on homecoming, we were speaking to the children in Super Church about when God was calming the storm. They was on the disciples and Jesus, they was on the same ship. And you know, the disciples began to be weary because all they was looking at was that storm that they was in the middle of. They started freaking out, well, what are we supposed to do? And Jesus was sleeping in the ship, in the back room, and they run to Jesus, but Jesus, why are you asleep? He said, why are ye fearful when I am with you? The Savior Almighty was with them. So why was they so worried? But you know, I began comparing myself to them. I began thinking that in life I get so carried away with the storm that I'm not thinking about I have the Savior with me. 
I'm not thinking about, hey, I've got the man of all men with me. I've got the king of kings, the Lord of lords. Why should I worry about this storm? The other day they sent in a group message, college and career, and someone had put on there that, you know, a lot of us will get on a ship not knowing the captain. A lot of us will get on an airplane not knowing the pilot. So why should we worry when we have our Savior with us through it all? Why should we worry? Because we know who holds our tomorrow. Because we've got the captain of top of the captains. We've got the pilot of top of the pilots. We have Jesus. So why should we worry? Let's worship with the worship team.
need to remind myself over and over again that I'm his forever. I don't ever want anything to cloud my mind or cloud my thought pattern, whether there's any other options or not. I'm his forever. His will is greater than my will. His ways are better than my ways. And I just need to learn that every day I must surrender completely and totally unto him. Why don't we give the Lord another hand clap of praise? He's a great God. He's greatly to be praised. You can be seated if you'd like. I quickly mentioned Friday night, there's a lock-in for ages 5 to 9, and uh, it will start at 6.30 uh, here at the church in the gym. So uh, if you've got children in that age bracket, you can drop them off at 6.30 here at the church. Uh, let me also go back and say I am uh, Echo Brother Gene. Our young drummer is doing an excellent job, and I appreciate him so much. I... Brother Dallas is not able to be here tonight. He hates that worse than anything. But you know what? I like depth. And you know what depth means? When there's somebody that's normally in a position, you just keep going and it's not no big deal. Depth means, depth in a football team means that you win. Amen. In a basketball team, it means you win. In a hockey team, it means you win. In a church, it means you win. Amen. We're winners. Amen. And I'm thankful for that. Let me also say this. You were amazing Sunday. And from the very uh, onset of the service to the very last, it was a great day. Thank you. Everyone that participated did a great job. Didn't you enjoy hearing about some of the past and the history of the church? <laughs> Folks, we don't ever need to forget. We didn't get here on our own. We didn't get here on our own. We, we, we're blessed. We have carpeted floors and padded cushion pews and nice air conditioning, but it ain't because of me and you. It's because somebody went before us. And you know what? We want to do our part so that when we're gone, somebody else can still enjoy and carry on where we've left off. Amen. And I, I'm so grateful for that. It was a great day, and I love celebrating our history, but then again, the meal was phenomenal. I will tell you, I enjoyed everything that I eat. I didn't eat everything because some of you got there before me, and it wasn't left when I got there, but that's okay. I had plenty, and it was a great day. Thank you for every one of you. I, I will say this, and I'll, I'll, I'm gonna, we're going to change the order of service in just a moment, but I will tell you that before any of you got here Sunday morning, I got here. I was the very first person here, which is normal for Sunday, but I was the very first person here Sunday morning, and when I got here, there was a pan of chocolate oatmeal cookies, and I eat some. I eat one, no, two, I eat three, and enjoyed all three of those before any of you got here. When I went through the line, because my whole rationale was there won't be any chocolate oatmeal cookies when I come back through the line today. Well, guess what? When I went back through the line, there was three chocolate oatmeal cookies that was left. And I got all three of them. And I made the statement, I didn't feel bad. Everybody else had done went in front of me. If they wanted them, they could have got them. Brother Gene said, you wouldn't have felt bad if there had been kids begging for them. You would have still got them. Probably so. But it was great. Everything was delicious. All the food. You, you, you guys are, you are show-offs, and I'm glad that you show off on days like that. It was, a, it was a great day, and all the food was delicious. The decorations was very good. And can I just say this? We come in a lot of times. I did. I came in and enjoyed the decorations, and I didn't put up none of it. How many of us did that? Somebody had to put it every bit up, and guess what? We come in tonight, and it's all gone. Somebody had to take every bit of it down. I appreciate all that work. I really do. We take for granted so much of so much. I do, I, and I, I try not to, but everything that goes on in a service, even from the songs that they sing, I appreciate them working on that, coming up with that. You know, we take it for granted it's just going to happen. Somebody has to put forth the effort, and every effort that goes forth, I appreciate. I believe God recognizes, and I believe God pays his debts. He blesses. Amen? So whatever you do for the Lord, do it with all your might. I promise you, you cannot outgive God. 
and we think of giving just in giving money. We do that and you do a great job at that, but there's so much more that's given than just giving in money. And thank you for every one of you for all that you do. I also want to say that tonight, I'm thankful Brother Rogers is going to preach for us in just a moment. I thought about preaching, and I wanted to preach. I really do. I, and you better brace yourself Sunday because the Lord's been stirring inside me. However, I did have a procedure yesterday on my leg, and uh, I had one a couple of weeks ago on my right leg, and then the next day I wound up in the hospital. Um, I didn't, it wasn't because of the procedure. To, yeah, I had a procedure done on my other left leg yesterday, and I could probably preach, but it would, it's very awkward because, as Bentley says, he's got a cast on. It's really not a cast, but it feels about like one. And so uh, I'm not going to try to stand up here and preach tonight. And I'm thankful for these men, these men that serve, and they're willing to serve, and I appreciate them so much. And aren't you glad for each other? We're part of the greatest church in the world. Amen. And I'm so proud for every one of you. It's good to have home all those that's been traveling. We've had several that's been out traveling and miss, and, but you're home tonight, and I'm glad to see each of you here. But I'm expecting God to even do greater things. It's good to be in church tonight. And you know what? To feel the presence of God, this is the best place and the best feeling that you can get anywhere. Amen. And if you hadn't felt the presence of God, I simply just instruct you to feel for him if happily you might find him. Amen. Our children will be dismissed in just a moment. Our youth will be dismissed. College and career, are they going to be dismissed as well? And so, but there will be the rest of us out here. Brother Rogers is going to come preach for us. We're going to have a good time in the Holy Ghost tonight. Amen. I'm thankful that you're here. God bless you for putting forth the effort. There's a lot of people that took the easy road and stayed home tonight. I'm not sure it's going to pay off in the end. Amen. I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to be very honest with you. I, I'm not sure that it's going to pay off in the end. But you put forth the effort because you felt like you needed to come to church tonight. I know I needed to be in church. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad I'm here. And most importantly, I'm glad God's here. Okay? Stand to your feet. Let's worship with these men of music. And before they play, let me quickly say this. Tyler and Taylor, the twin boys, Johnson, their grandfather was buried today. It's been a very difficult day for them. He passed away Saturday night uh, late, and then he had the funeral this evening. Would you keep them in your prayers? You, he has played a big role in their life. He's been very instrumental. And those young men and those young guys are so respectful, so caring, so loving. I, if you don't know Taylor and Tyler Johnson, you're missing out. They are happy guys, and they're willing guys. And I, I love them boys so much, but just hold them in your prayers. You would want somebody holding you up in prayers if it was your family. And just over the next few days, let's hold them up in prayers. But before we're dismissed, let's pray for them. God, I know that you see their hurting hearts tonight. I know that you feel their pain. And I ask that you reach down and you just give them comfort and strength that only you can give. Be with them during this time. Lord, for this we'll be careful to give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Men of music, if you'll play us a musical, we're going to get into the Word of God.
house of the Lord. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me to let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. I want to thank Brother Josh for the opportunity to come and preach tonight. Amen. I appreciate him and Brother Bishop and the church, each and every one of you. Amen. All the ministers here at this church. Amen. All the Sunday school teachers and everybody else. Appreciate y'all today. Amen. You have my Bible. I'm going to turn with me to the book of John, chapter number 5 and verse number 1. Amen. I want to preach for a little while tonight on the prisoner at the pool. Amen. Many people today are prisoners today because if they don't know who the Lord is, I'm thankful that I know who he is tonight. Amen. Many, many people don't know him tonight, but I'm glad that I know him. Amen. I'm, and after this, there was the feast of the Jews that Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem by the sheep market pool, which is called the Hebrew tongue, beside I having five porches. And they laid a great multitude of them folks, the blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For the angels went down in a certain season in the pool to trouble the water. And whosoever was first and after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. A certain man which there was had an infirmity 38 years, and when Jesus saw him lying, knew he had been now a long time in case he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? And the impotent man answered unto him and said, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. And Jesus said, Arise and take up thy bed and walk. Amen. Brother Josh, will you pray and ask the blessing upon the word tonight? God, I thank you, Lord, for your truth and your word, God. In your name, Lord, I thank you, Jesus. Your power, Lord, in your name, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. Amen. You can be seated tonight. Amen. This is the set of having five porches. Amen. The impotent man, the blind, the lame, the halt, and withered. Laid at the poo, amen, and every who first was in the poo was made whole of whatever disease that he had. This man had been there for 38 years waiting for the waters to be troubled. Amen, he was waiting, he was, and sometimes in our life that we would think that everybody else is receiving their blessing and, and where's mine at? Amen, but so many times in life that he was there for 38 long years waiting for the waters to be troubled. Amen. The angels came down in that certain season and troubled the waters. And so when Jesus saw this man, he said, Would thou be made whole? And he said, Sir, that I have no one to help me in the pool when the water's troubled. I have no one to help me in. When I try to receive my blessing, somebody else beats me to my blessing. Amen. And they get into the pool, and I don't receive my healing. Amen. Jesus simply told the man, he said, Arise and take up thy bed and walk. Amen. When Jesus speaks, when Jesus does something, he does it right. He does not have to do it. He does it right. Amen. And so in their, in their life that when... Jesus had healed this man. He said to take his bed up and walk. And if you would read in the John chapter 5 and verse 14, it said that after when Jesus found him in the temple, he found this man in the temple. And this man was made whole at that hour. And Jesus said, go, and he told the man, sin no more, the lest the worst thing come upon thee. I begin to think, Brother Josh, for 38 years that this man stayed at the pool, what could be the worst thing that would come upon him? Yeah. And I begin to think and I begin to meditate upon it. And the worst thing that I believe tonight is that that man to be cast in outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. There's no thing in life, amen, is to be cast into the lake of fire 
Amen. Well, the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Amen. We would think that many times in our life, amen, that no one is concerned about my problem, that no one's is, is meeting my need and what my need is in my life. But I come here tonight to tell you that Jesus cares about your need tonight. Amen. First Peter 5 and 7 says, To cast all your cares upon me, for I care for you. Amen. We can cast all of our cares upon him, for he careth for us. And no doubt that we're living in a troubled world. Amen. I don't know that you heard it or not that, that the boy killed his 14-year-old boy, killed his whole family. Amen. We're living in a troubled world today. Amen. We're troubled on every side. Amen. Job said that a man that's born of a woman in a few days is full of trouble. Amen. But I like what in the book of Psalms for in the book of Psalms, the Bible said in Psalms 46, in verse number 1, that God is our refuge, our strength, our very present help in time of trouble. Yes. Amen. God is our refuge. That refuge means to be in trouble. Amen. And in danger. But these men that stayed at the pool, these men that was blind, the lame, and the halt, and the weather, they was helpless. They had no hope in their life. And that was like you and I before we came to the Lord. We had no hope in our life. We had no joy in our life. We had no peace in our life. Amen. But God came and he rescued our life. Amen. And so we would read and we would see in the word of God. Amen. There's many things that we must do in our life. Amen. Jesus said that we have to strive to enter in at the straight gate. In Luke chapter 13 and verse 24, Jesus said, Strive to enter you in at the straight gate. For many will seek to enter and shall not be able. And so we got to enter in our lives today. Amen. To strive and to press our way. The apostle Paul wrote in the Philippian jail, in Philippians chapter 3, I did not give him this verse, in verse 14, and he said, I press toward the mark of the prize of high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen, that I press my way towards God every day in my life. Amen, Matthew chapter 24, verse 13, it said, Jesus said this, in Matthew 24 and 13, he said, Strive to enter you in at the straight gate. He said, for many will seek to enter and will not be able. Amen. We have to push our way. We have to endure. Jesus said, he that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Right. And so there's things in life that comes in our life that we have to push our way. We have to press our way toward the things of God in our life. Amen. That God is on our side. And no matter what we're going through, amen, in Psalms 121, in verse number one, it said, I will lift my eyes to the hills, and once did my help come from, my help come from the Lord that made the heavens and the earth. Amen. We don't have to be at the pool waiting for the waters to be troubled. When we come to the house of God, the water's already troubled. Amen. The Holy Ghost is here to do the work in our lives. Amen. He's here to do the work in our lives. Proverbs 3 and verse 5 says to trust in the Lord. And that's what we need in our lives. To trust in the Lord with thy whole heart. And lean not to thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct our path. Because he cares about us today. As Peter said, we can cast all our cares upon him, for he careth for us. Amen. We don't have to go to the high priest. Amen. We can go directly to the throne room of God. In the book of Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16 says, Let us therefore come boldly for the throne of grace that we may attain mercy to find grace to help in time of need in our life. Amen. We have to press our way. We have to push our way, and we have to strive every day in our life to enter into the grace, to enter into the promised land that God has for us. 
Have you often wondered what it's going to be like when we get to heaven? Amen. The scripture teaches us in verse Corinthians chapter 2 in verse 9 for it is written eyes have not seen ears not even heard neither had it entered the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him we've never seen heaven we've never seen Jesus but what glory it shall be appeared in there that day when we look upon him the one they pierced and the one they crucified and hang up on the cross of Calvary but there's things that we have to do. And, and, and the thing that we don't like doing is waiting on the Lord. We want him to come in our time. In Isaiah 40, in verse 31, the Bible says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. We're living in a troubled world. Amen. But Jesus said in John 14, he said, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not true, I would not have told you that I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come and receive you into myself. The word that I am, that you may be also. He already said it in his word that it is written that I have not seen and it is not even heard. We've never seen the Lord. We will overcome. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Amen. We're overcomer. They that walk in white raiment. Amen. Is going to be clothed in white raiment. And Jesus said, I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess it before my Father and before his angels. Amen. We don't have to wait for the waters to be dry. There was a woman with the issue of blood. She had it for 12 long years. Amen. She spent all that she had. I wonder what she would have done if she would have went to Jesus first. Amen. But many times, amen, we don't wait till troubles come in our life. Amen. That we call upon the name of the Lord. Amen. The Bible said the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous run into it and are saved. And so we understand in our life, amen, that we have to come to the Lord, amen. And, and our commission today, amen, is to go into the, all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Our responsibility is to go and tell others what Jesus has done for me, amen. Legions was clothed. The Bible said he was in his right mind. And Jesus, he, legions wanted to follow Jesus. And Jesus told him, said, go tell others what I have done for thee. Amen. We need to be about the Father's business today to go out and tell those that are lost in a dying world, in a troubled world that we're living in today. Amen. Jesus is concerned today because he is not slack concerning his promises. As some man count slackness, but he's long suffered to usward that not willing that any should perish, that all to come to repentance. Amen. It's his will that not anybody should be lost. Amen. But we have to strive in our life every day to enter in at the straight gate. For many will seek to enter and will not be able. Amen. I want us in a troubled world that I'm living in. In a troubled world that you're living in is to learn to trust in God. To learn to serve him no matter what comes and no matter what goes. If I'm having a good day or if I'm having a bad day, I'm still making up in my mind that I'm going to serve you, Lord. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Amen. And so Jesus finds this man in the temple. It's amazing how, amen, when somebody gets a touch from the Lord, how they want to go to the house of God. Amen. The scripture teaches us forsaken not to sin with ourselves together. The matter of some is exhorting one another so much more as we see the day approaching in our life. Amen. That we can come to the Lord. Amen. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28. Jesus said, Come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest to take up on my yoke and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly to heart. 
and you shall find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. To come and give it to Jesus. Amen. To give our all to Jesus. Our whole life to give it to Jesus. Everything that we own is through Jesus today. Everything that we have is through Jesus today. Everything that we need is in him today. And so in all of our lives today, amen, we are living in a troubled world. But we don't have to wait no 38 years for God to move in our lives. Amen. All we got to do is forsake the sins of the world and turn away from the sin. Amen. And run the race. The race that was set before us. The race with patience. Amen. Paul said this. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. And I have kept the faith. And there is a crown of righteousness that righteous judge shall give me in that day. And not to me only. Only, but all of them that love the appearing of the Lord. Amen. Do you love the Lord today? The scripture said that we know that all things work together for the good. That them that love God are called according to his purpose. You've been called out of sin to be separate. You've been called out to be changed. You've been washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. You have a testimony today. And don't lose your testimony. So many today, they lose in their testimony and what God has done in their life. I never want to remember. Amen. The scripture said, remember the pit that God brought us out of. To not go back to that party clay. To not go back to that, my, that thing. Amen. But go to the rock. The rock of Christ Jesus. Amen. I, I didn't give them the scripture. But in the book of 2 Samuel, chapter number 22, David said this. David said, God has delivered me. He's delivered me from Saul. He delivered me from my enemy. David said, he's my rock. He's my shield. He's my butler. He's my refuge. He's my high tower. He's everything tonight that you need. He's everything tonight that I need. That I all is in him today and all of the fullness of the Godhead is in Jesus today. Amen. I'm thankful. Amen. That Jesus rescued me and he saved me from sin. Amen. It brought me out of this world. Amen. It made me a new creature in Christ. Amen. And I don't want to go back to the old things. But we got to press our way sometimes. Amen. There's times in our lives, amen, that we got to touch and feel God. And there's times in our lives that you can pray and you don't feel a thing. But you got to keep on serving God. You got to keep on living for God. Amen. There's a test that comes in life. It's God tend to test Abraham's life. He sent the test through all of life. Amen. The scripture teaches us that we don't never, we have not, when we come to the Lord, Amen. Satan did not tempt us when he had us into the world. But the Bible said that we're tempted when we're drawn from our lust and enticing. Amen. We're tempted when we're drawn away. Jesus was tempted. Amen. Three things he was tempted. Amen. If you be the son of God and command these stones to be made bread. And if you fall off this mountain, the angels will take charge over thee. Amen. If Jesus was tempted, you and I are going to be tempted. Amen. But we're overcomers because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. That you found Jesus one day. Amen. That Jesus came and rescued you. Amen. For the sins of this world. Amen. You don't have to be the servant of that anymore because he has washed you and he's cleaned you. It's your own free will and your own choice. Decisions of life that people make today. Amen. But the God of heaven that I serve is concerned about souls today. Amen. He's concerned that they not be lost. That they would be saved today. Amen. But they got to be obedient to the word of God. Amen. They got to stand fast in the word of God. Amen. The Lord is not no slack to you and I and no one else. Because Paul Peter said that I perceive that God is no respected person. And so we know that it was a troubling time for this man. Many times he was probably hungry. Many times that he got rained upon. And many times he went through the storms of life. For 38 years waiting for the waters to be troubled. 
And I don't believe that this man knew who Jesus was. I believe he heard of the miracles of Jesus. Because he said, sir, I have no one to help me to get into the pool. And Jesus told him, said, arise and take up thy bed and walk. I believe when Jesus said those words, he understood and knew who Jesus was. Amen. He understood and he knew. And there's something about receiving the Spirit of God in our lives. Amen. That we want to be in the house of God. Amen. That is where we draw our strength from, our brothers and sisters. Amen. And to be in unity and serving God and living for God. Amen. But the thing that we don't like doing is we don't like waiting. Amen. I know that you know that it's when I pull up the lows, and I believe that Brother Josh, that's the longest red light I've ever seen in my life. I said, my Lord, is this light going to ever change? Is it going to stay red forever? My wife will say, you need some patience. I said, yeah, I do. But anyway, you think, my Lord, when it changes, they just sit there. They're probably on their phones. But I don't like waiting. I want it right to you right now. I don't want to wait. But sometimes our ways are not God's ways. And his thoughts are not our thoughts. We have to wait upon the Lord. That don't mean that he's slow. But we, we have to wait upon him. He moves in his time. The Bible said there's seasons for everything. Amen. There's a season, amen, for everything under the sun. And so in our lives tonight, amen, is to continually to put our trust in God. And he is concerned about you today. You don't think that he is concerned, he is. Amen. He wants to meet your needs tonight. Amen. God does not meet our wants, but he does meet our needs. And what we have need of. And we can go directly to the throne of God for ourselves. And we can find grace to help in time of need in our life. Right. Amen. Every one of this in this building. Amen. You may not need God now, but there's going to be a time that you're going to need him. Amen. If ever in this world that they need God is today. Amen. The only way that they're going to know it is that we tell them. Amen. That's what Jesus commissioned us to do is to go into the, all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And then the end will come. Amen. The end will come. There's many, many churches all around the world that we see today and they're not preaching the truth of the word of God. Amen. I believe that this word and this gospel is the good news of salvation. But it takes obedience to receive it. It takes being obedient to God and his word and his standards and what in our lives to be pleasing unto him. Amen. I want to be pleasing to him. I preached many weeks ago in the prisons and I told him, I said, we cannot live our lives pleasing to God with a pack of cigarettes in our pocket, Brother Josh. I said, we can't live our lives pleasing to God living a homosexual lifestyle. We can't be living a pleasing life under God, living an abomination under God. We cannot be pleasing under God, living an adultery and fornication lifestyle. Amen, we gotta be a separate people. We gotta come out from among the world, as Paul said, and be separate, said the Lord. Amen, I'm not trying to be the pastor of the church. Amen, but many, many things that we must do in our lives. I said, we've got to present our body to the Lord, a living sacrifice. We've got to be acceptable unto him. We've got to be what he wants us to be if we're going to hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant, enter into the joys of the Lord. Amen. There was a man that he was, had a palsy, and it was known abroad in the book of Mark chapter 2 that, that Jesus was in the house. And the scripture said that they took the roof off and lowered the man where Jesus was. Jesus said many times through the scripture, thy faith had made thee whole. Amen. Thy faith had touched God. That many, as you read and, and you will search the scriptures of the healings and miracles that Jesus did. Amen. He said, thy faith had made thee whole. 
But every word that you read, Jesus said, go and sin no more. Every word that he done a miracle, he told him to go and sin no more. Amen. He said, rejoice not for the, for the spirits are subject unto thee. And, and rejoice not over the scorpions, that you have power over that. But he said, notwithstanding in this, rejoice because of your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. You don't go and sign your name on the door and, and go to heaven. Your name is in the book of life when you receive the Holy Ghost. And the scripture says that he will not blot your name out if you keep serving him and living for him. But if you walk the way that you want to walk, that name will be blotted out. I don't want nobody else to take my name, Brother Josh. Amen. I want my name staying there and recorded in heaven in the Lamb's book of life. Will you stand with me tonight? There's two things we're going to be judged on. That Lamb's book of life and the word of God. Those two books are going to be open on that day. And every one of us is going to give an account to God. Whether it be good or whether it be bad. I want it to be good, don't you? I don't want it to be bad. Amen. And we're going to stand before the Lord and give an account for every deed that we've done in this body. Amen, and I want to hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. If he says, well done, and good and faithful servant, but Josh, he ain't going to lie. He's going to tell the truth on that day. He knows everything about you. The scripture said he knows the hair that's numbered on your head. Amen, you want to play something, Brother Keith? Amen, if you're here tonight and you have your need, God's here to meet your need tonight. Amen. The greatest need that you have in your life is receiving the Holy Ghost in your life. The greatest need of all, amen, is a great healing in your body. But the greatest of all is receiving the Spirit of God in your life. Amen. I want Him in my life. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.